All right, so this is what I would consider to be a very standard uh, titration type problem. You'll notice that I've drawn a little picture over here and I'll, I'll talk about that as I go through the problem, but let's get, get started. It says, a student titrates 25.3 milliliters of HCl, so that would be my um, you know, HCl that's down here in my Erlenmeyer flask, with an unknown concentration. So this solution, we don't know what the concentration of that is. And I'm gonna titrate that with 13.24 milliliters of this standard solution of barium hydroxide. So I've got my standard solution of barium hydroxide up here, and I'm gonna dispense 13.24 milliliters from my burette, um, and it's 2.5 molar solution. And the question is, what is the molarity of the HCl? So this is a very standard type titration problem. You're gonna see things like this again and again and again. Um, so basically to get started, we always wanna start with a balanced chemical equation. And in this case, it's not as straightforward as our typical sort of strong acid, strong base titration reactions because we've got barium hydroxide. And barium hydroxide is a little bit more complicated because we've got BaOH2. So how do we take that into account? So the way I would sort of look at this, I would start with my HCl and then my barium hydroxide. And I know that this is a neutralization reaction, so I'm going to form water. That's the first thing I'm always gonna write, plus water, because I know if I take an acid and I take a base, the H plus will combine with the OH minus to form water. Now, I think some of us will look at this and, and be sort of upset or uncomfortable by the fact that I've got only one proton here and then I've got OH2. So you might say, well, there's a leftover OH minus. What do I do with that? Well, I know, and hopefully soon you will know, that you're just gonna have two of these H pluses react with these two OH minuses. So at this point in time, I would say just don't worry about it. Say, okay, yeah, like this OH piece will react with this H plus piece. What's left over? Barium and chlorine. BaCl2, and I, I think a lot of people will again miss this two here Barium is going to have a plus two charge. Chlorine is going to have a minus one charge. So I need to balance that out. It's an ionic compound. So BaCl2. And now I'm going to balance the chemical equation. So to balance it, I would start by putting a two here. I've got Cl2, Cl2. And then for my hydrogen, I'm going to need a two in front of the, the water molecule as well. So now I think we can see a little bit more easily. I'm going to take two of these H pluses react them with two OH minuses to form two water molecules, and what's left over is barium chloride. So hopefully that helps you write out your balanced chemical equation. The next thing that we're gonna need to do um, is really determine the moles of HCl. And I, I'm saying moles of HCl because I know if I'm looking for the molarity, molarity is moles per liter, so moles over liters, right, equals question mark. And I already know the liters, right? We're given 25.3 milliliters. That is the liters that I'm gonna to need to use. So my moles of HCl, that's what I'm really looking for. I know the moles of barium hydroxide. I can use this information here to find the moles of barium hydroxide. And then I'm gonna correlate that moles of barium hydroxide to my moles of HCl. So let's find moles first. Find moles of barium hydroxide. So to find the moles of barium hydroxide, I'm gonna take 2.50 moles over one liter, so that 2.5 molar, that means 2.5 moles per liter, and I'm gonna multiply that by 0 0.01324 liters. So here I've converted this 13.24 milliliters into liters. If I cancel out my units of liters, that gives me a number of moles of 0 0.0331 moles of barium hydroxide. So now if I want to correlate this number of moles of barium hydroxide to my moles of HCl, I'm going to use this mole to mole ratio, right? That's why it's so important to have a balanced chemical equation because now I'm going to use these coefficients to say, well, if I want to find my moles of HCl, that's going to be 0 0.0331 moles of barium hydroxide times that mole to mole ratio times two moles of HCl for every one mole of barium hydroxide. And that leads me to a value of 0 0.0662 moles of HCl. 
So this is the number of moles of HCl that must have been present in my titrate, titration in my Erlenmeyer flask because this is you know, the, the multiple ratio for how much barium hydroxide needed to be dispensed to get to that equivalence point. The equivalence point will be where all of this HCl has been neutralized by this barium hydroxide. This is the number of moles of HCl that that tells us was present in that flask. So the last step here is to find the molarity. And that's just gonna be the number of moles divided by the liters or 0 0.0662 moles divided by 0 0.0253 liters. So again, converting this 25.3 milliliters into liters. And that gives me a final answer of 2.62 molar HCl. So what we've done essentially is we've taken this unknown molarity solution and we've done a titration to the equivalence point. Um, we would probably use phenolphthalein as an indicator here to tell us when we go from an acidic solution to a basic solution and we can calculate the molarity of the HCl solution. All right.